I'm blown away by the present of how many women have incredible art. And so I feel it has to be our mission to get yeah. those women's names out there. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Missions That Made Them. I am your host, Jason Verdelli. This isn't just a podcast, but rather it's a movement. It's a movement designed to make the world a better place by bringing more awareness to the great work of the people and organizations making a difference. And more importantly, how you can help. We live in a world today surrounded by a narrative in the media that focuses in on negativity and draws attention to the problems, but not the solutions. Our guests represent the solutions, not the problems. And with that, I am super, super excited today. Uh, almost as excited as Chris Farley. If anybody's watched SNL uh, way back, uh, we, we, uh, we really do miss him. I mean, Kimberly, we're talking about him beforehand. But that's how excited I am right now. I am Chris Farley, Matt Foley, excited to introduce Kimberly Miller with Fem Art Gallery. And she's going to be telling us everything about their organization, what they're doing to inspire artists, and in, in, uh, just the great things they're doing great things that they're doing to to uh, build uh, outreach in their in the communities as well so Kimberly I'm super excited um, I think I've overused the excited part but uh, uh, anyway uh, I think people get the point uh, so welcome to the missions that made them thank you so much Jason it's a pleasure to be here I'm really excited about this opportunity to talk about my organization yeah so so tell everybody uh femoir gallery uh tell everybody about the organization and uh, let's start you know just about it and then how you got there and how or how everything got started if you will absolutely um we just celebrated our fifth year on uh, March seventeenth of this year and um we started five years ago after I graduated from college. And you're thinking, wow, she looks like a pretty old 22 year old. But <laughs> actually I graduated from college at UNF at the age of 56 in 2017. And one of the things I did was I attended as still a student of UNF, I attended the Women's March in Washington DC. Some people might remember that a little get together of a million or more women yeah. all over the world. And I was so inspired that I decided that I was getting my Bachelor of Fine Arts degree and I wanted to do something a little bit more impactful that, than just having my own art career. So I got together with a couple other students and we began an organization and we called it FemArt because it is specifically um, mission driven to help elevate women's visual voices. And what that means is that we help women artists to get their work out there because even though we have over 55% of women in fine arts in the degree, uh, master's degrees and all the different arts degrees, we really get very little representation in our museums and our galleries. So, we wanted to give women more opportunities to have their work seen. And by having your work seen, that automatically increases the value of your artwork. And we also want to offer, um, or wanted to offer, and we have succeeded in offering uh, educational opportunities so that women can learn more about building their skills and not just building their skills, but building their confidence and also increasing the value of their work so that they get more exposure to the business of art which a lot of women mm. don't get in even colleges. You don't really learn a lot about sure. the art business. And the other component of our mission was to get community outreach so that we can actually have a hands-on impact on our local communities and on our society so that people don't just understand that women are professional artists, but also that people it, are represented in the arts through very many voices and very diverse voices, because often um, society will put people in, and I hate to use the old cliche of boxes, but usually mm -hmm. if even women, I've asked women about how they feel about women in the arts. And I've had women say, well, I think women can make the world a lot prettier with their artwork. 
And I'm like, then you haven't seen a lot of women's artwork <laughs> because it's really not about beautifying the world. Our artwork right. has a definite um, voice that is distinct to our experiences. And I think that's what our society is missing is more of the feminist viewpoints and the feminist viewpoint can range. I mean, you even have males that have a feminist viewpoint. So if mm -hmm. we just make the world a little bit more aware of the different voices and different experiences, we will have a better culture and a better society. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, what I like too about, uh, I mean, there's a lot there, a lot to digest, <laughs> but, uh, um, and, and if you're saying, wow, like what, what's going on with all this, uh, what, you know, like just to learn about the depth of everything that you do, uh, be sure to check out fem. So it's femartgallery.org. So as we're, as you're listening to this, you can check out the website, uh, femartgallery.org. Be sure to check it out. The, so Kimberly with the business, I love, I'm, I'm intrigued by the business side of things with what you have going on. I mean, obviously you, you have artists that were usually really, really talented, but getting that out, distributing that, and obviously the more places you can distribute that, I guess it also increases the value of the art and everything. I mean, how do you do that? How do you take somebody that is this talented person and say, you know, hey, let's, uh, let's make this a business or here's how, to, here's how to be a better business person? Oh, Jason, I'm so glad you asked about that. <laughs> because... <laughs> The past five years, we have been finding venues, finding different buildings, different places to do pop-up art shows. And during the pandemic, we had virtual art shows online. So we have survived the pandemic um, that actually closed down so many art galleries and so many places and sources for a lot of these talented artists who have been, you know, displaying their artwork. But um, we are opening up our very first brick and mortar um, on mm. April 23rd. And so we have 60, I believe 67, we had some added artists. We have 67 artists who are going to be exhibiting their artwork. And so we are hoping to have a lot of people come into this gallery and to see women's artwork. Um, there is a national museum and I'm giving a shout out to National Museum of Women in the Arts because I've been there, I've visited them, and I actually um, belong with them. And that is a museum of all women's artwork. So here in Jacksonville, we have women, and I would say we have women outside of the Jacksonville area. We have women from Georgia and South Florida and everything, but we have phenomenally credited, uh, not credited, phenomenally um, credible artists that have amazing artwork and they do sell in major galleries, but we have them as members of our organization. So what we do is we offer them an exhibit opportunity that they can show their work in our gallery and people can come in and they can see the work and they can also purchase the work. And one of the things that we do is they purchase the work and we have a 30% commission that we put back into the organization so that we can improve and get more talent into our yeah. organization. And the more women we have who belong to our organization, we also give them calls to artists from other galleries and other places mm. all over the world. If we yeah. hear about it, we let them know about it. And when they get into those shows, we also put it on all of our social media and we let everyone know when a woman um, artist member gets a prize wins first place mm. for some kind of an art show. So that's why belonging to an organization like ours is important at any level of your art journey, whether you are a novice or a professional artist joining our organization, we make sure that we get the word out there of everybody seeing your work. And we hope to gather followers. We also have on our website, all of our artists listed. So when you go onto our website, you look up the member artist, and what you can do is you can look at any of the artwork and you can look into it, go directly to that artist website, and then you can start following them. <clears throat> and then you get to see their new work. And that's that's probably the best thing we can do for yeah. the artist out there. So and I can't yeah, really say I can't say all women artists. We have a male artist um right. member. 
So and that's a big question. Of, I've had even my son said, Mom, why are you discriminating against men if you're against discrimination? And I said, we're right. not discriminating. You know, it's almost like if you're an Italian restaurant, why don't you serve French right. food? And it's like, right now we're focusing on Italian. <laughs> that's part of our yeah. name. So even though we um, are promoting women's visual voices, we are really across the board open to all artists. And we just really want the artist who don't get enough representation. So... Yeah. And I think that's, that's really one respectable because I think you have to focus, you have to focus in an area uh, and, and you identified this gap and, and this is really what sparked you to create the organization is that you, you've identified this gap with uh, female artists and also you've identified gaps just in, in that you, uh, you understand that there are gaps, not just in, in there and maybe some of the opportunities there, but also there's gaps in like the business side, right? The distribution side, you have the super talented person that is, uh, that just, you know, they don't understand maybe the channels. So you're connecting them into different channels as far as, um, you know, everything from your website to connecting with other artists. And I saw too, that you also offer member. So you offer like an annual membership, uh, and memberships for the artists. That's correct. We do. We offer membership and yeah. it's an annual membership fee. And we have the different levels so that um, if you are a novice and you're just starting to pick up art and you don't feel comfortable, you know, you're not really quite ready to exhibit at a professional level. We have classes and opportunities for you to learn more so that you can actually begin to develop your art skills and your art network. And it's a great mm. network because also yeah. we have... This is something aside, um, part of our community outreach, we've started a program called Women of Color in the Arts Speak. And we were just given a grant from the Dolores Weaver Foundation for $2,000. And what we did was we launched this year a program that we go into the high schools, into Title I schools. And we have a woman of color that's one of our artist members that goes and talks about what her challenges have been and also how she overcame them. And she mm. actually teaches the students in ways that we can um, help them build their confidence. And also representation is very important. So we make, sh no. we make sure that um, the students are seeing someone who may look like them and to understand that if they feel that they wanna right. pursue an art career, it is possible and not just possible, but we will help them. So we give any students who are interested a free year membership. And what we do is we mm. hook them up with a mentor. And so cool. that mentor is able to help them to develop and to get into an art school, an art college, or just to know a little bit more about getting into exhibits and how to be seen. So that's just a part of our community outreach, connected with our education, yeah. connected with our membership and our exhibits. There's a lot of synergy going on here. <laughs> a lot of synergy, right? It's, uh, <clears throat> I am putting, uh, now, since we had this conversation before and I have to do mention it, that is an Anchorman 2 thing, right? <laughs> synergy with, uh, there's this little thing called synergy. Uh, <clears throat> but obviously we're not, uh, we're, we're not Qual Airlines or anything like that, right? So we don't have to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, to, to worry about, uh, you know, we're, we're doing great things. Right. But, um, right. the, uh, but what, really what you're doing is so cool though, because it is synergy. It, it is, is, is somebody that has, uh, uh, a future that has says, Hey, I want to be uh, a well-known artist or I want my, uh, my art to inspire the world. Right. That's, that's part of even one of the things that is really part of this podcast mission is to inspire other people. Right. So, um, a lot of that is is where do you get started um, that, you know, so if you you are not even or even if you want to advance your artistic ability, things like that. Right. There's some people that already have that that just need more of that. They need to round the edges a little bit. But then there's others that say, hey, you know what, this is what I want to do. Uh, but I have no direction. I'm not learning all this stuff in school. Maybe I'm getting the fine art stuff done in school. I'm learning a little bit of that more in school. But. I don't have the network. That's the one thing even when I went to school is like, okay, graduate. I went for business and marketing. So totally different world. I, uh, the only college class I, I dropped was art history. So I, I, I appreciate it, but I'm, I don't think I was made for the arts uh, per, se, per se, but 
maybe a different type of art. But the uh, the thing there is that that there, there is a there's a thing that's missing, which is the networking piece, right? I think that for a lot of people, that's the that's a huge piece, and that is a big piece in in in, in how people succeed in life. Really, is your network and who you're connected to. So, I mean, this is Kimberly. I'm just blown away by by what you guys are doing. Thank you, Jason. It's, <laughs> it's really nice to hear. I like blowing people away with our organization. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's I'm I'm really well, and, impressed too. I I'm the director and founder, our executive director and founder, but. I still get blown away when I have women dropping off artwork that I'm just, I, I'm like, where are you? Like, yeah. where, why aren't you in a major museum? Why is your work not known? Why is mm -hmm. your, you know, why is your name not on the tip of the tongues of some of the local communities? And I just, I'm uh, astounded by um, the lack of, of acknowledgement of women's artwork because um, I know Frida Kahlo, I, I have also been a teacher. So yeah. I've gone into my art classes and I actually part of the Women of Color in the Arts Speak, I'm backing up a little bit. We go in there and we ask them to name five famous artists. And mm. most common, I mean, if we do get them to remember any of the famous artists, they are always Picasso. Van Gogh, Da Vinci, they're always those standbys, but there's, um, um, and Monia Lewis is an incredible woman sculptor who has not been recognized in the United States, but is very popular in Italy. And um, there's just so many, and Frida Kahlo, I just can't imagine, you know, she's in some of the art history classes in colleges, but just, not enough in all of the books yeah. of the top 100 artists. So I'm blown away by the present of how many women have incredible art. And so I feel it has to be our mission to get yeah. those women's names out there. So that's, that's, that's cool. awesome. That is, that is incredible. Um, yeah. And, and also the fact that you're, you're taking their artwork, you're putting it on their website and you're promoting that right throughout You're you're really developing a channel, right? You're developing a, a marketing channel for artists that may not, again, they don't have a marketing degree. They went to school for art, right? So there, there's all these different things that you, that are involved out there to, to succeed in the arts, but I mean, my gosh, like if I was going to start off in anything, I'd start here. Uh, one is I, I, and I have no talent, artistic talent whatsoever. Uh, you know, at least maybe something that we showed off in a museum, but <laughs> the, um, and the only artists that I do know that are related are, are like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle names, so like Leonardo, <laughs> Donatello, or I don't know, is Donatello even an artist, I guess, right? Or but I guess they, I think that was their thing, or Don Raphael, and, and I think what was the other one? Um, <laughs> Michael, well, Michelangelo was definitely Michelangelo. Uh, yes, <laughs> you know, he, was the one with the, he was the one with the nunchucks or whatever, right? So, um, uh, so again, maybe you're hopefully your you know your your much your artistic uh, knowledge and everything else is way above mine, um, but oh. uh, but again, this is a you're a, a, what a better place to start, right? What a better place to go and, and as a resource saying, hey, I want to. This is my vision. This is my dream. This is what I want to do. You know, get started. Go to femartgallery.org, Contact you and and move the start moving the needle. Absolutely, you know? that would be that would so, be awesome. So, Kimberly, how does somebody support you? Uh, how does uh, somebody out here who's who's checking the website out? They're they're blown away. Uh, they're inspired. They got a, a, you know a, the inspiration here today. What uh, what are some of the best ways that for uh, for people out there to get involved and to support? I'm really glad you asked about that, Jason, because we have a donor hub that's on our website. And again, that's at femartgallery.org. There, I got to plug myself in there. <laughs> but, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it wasn't that smooth. Um, yeah. but, um, they can go there and go to the donor hub, but there's also other ways to support our organization. Like I said, we had Dolores Weaver Foundation, who has given us $2,000 to launch our women of color in the arts speak. If there are other businesses or philanthropists or big donors that would like to have a, a voice in our um, growth, that would be really wonderful because if, if you are a manager or you are working in a major hospital 
and you would like to have a women's art show, we would love for you to contact us as well, because what we can do is we can provide um, women's artwork. And that's not just in Jacksonville. Mm. We can also hopefully get more nationwide um, recognition and get artists from all over. And we would like to get their art up in the hospitals, major buildings. And um, yeah. that is another visibility. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even yes. think about that. Yeah. Getting the artwork. Cause it, you know, a lot of people, they go into hospitals, there's always artwork, right. Mm -hmm. you go along the walls there, but you never think of how it gets there. Right. Right. So, and I so, they yeah. often get them from colleges, local colleges and everything, but if they're doing it through fem art, they're also um, promoting women's visual voices in a way that colleges usually can't do that. They cannot specify yeah. women's voices. So, um, our organization can help with that and we can build partnerships. And um, we have a lot of businesses, local businesses. Lowe's happened to give us a whole lot of paint donations. Oh, that's um, cool. Donated to us so that we could paint a beautiful mural on a floor at our new gallery. So we, so cool. yeah. we advertise Lowe's. We, um, Target has given us funding. And so a lot of the different businesses if you support us, we definitely make sure that everyone knows that you're part of cultivating a better society and that visual voices, women's okay. visual voices in particular, are important to your business. So those are really great ways to help support our organization. Um, yeah. And also- That's usually the- yeah. I'm sorry. The brand, or real quick, the brand for businesses out there. What a better way! Social responsibility mm -hmm. is is a number one factor, not only in uh, millennial generations and, and up, especially. Uh, there are a number of different statistics out there that that point to uh, that that uh, people that uh, people in that age age class or generation and up basically value companies that are more socially responsible than they even do a higher pay. So mm -hmm. that's very important. I mean, there's ROI in actually getting involved, direct ROI, not only in its brand awareness and brand association, brand position, all these different things, but there's actually ROI directly related to that. Um, and the more of these, these types of things that you can do as a, as a big brand or even a small brand, even yes. a, a small business getting involved, uh, supporting local, supporting uh, supporting the arts, things like that. There's, there's a lot of different ways that that comes back. Um, as you, uh, cause again, you only need, sometimes you only need, uh, uh, one or two of the right people to go through and see that you're, you're there supporting them. And, uh, that can open up big doors if, even if you're a smaller company. So, uh, yes. don't, don't ever miss that opportunity, but go ahead, Kimberly. Really, I just had to do a plug on that because I've, uh, I've worked a lot in that space for the past 18 years. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of benefit in what Kimberly's talking about today. Thank you. Thank you, Continue, Jason. Continue, though. <laughs> I, didn't mean, I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to steal your thunder there. <laughs> no, that was perfect. I'm really, really glad. And you and I need yeah. to talk a little bit after this podcast to uh, discuss a little bit more of your 18 years of experience. We're going to, yeah. uh, we're going to pull you in on all of this. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's really great. This is a super opportunity. Um, so those are just ways. And as far as our women of color in the arts speak, I keep bringing that back because um, we have so many more schools. We've only launched this in two schools, but if you are a principal or an art teacher in a Title I school in Jacksonville or even Southern Georgia, we would like for you to reach out to us too because we would like to be in your schools and to, we are big advocates for education. We believe that the more that high school, even middle school and even elementary, we've actually gone into preschools and we've had That's curriculum so cool. designed so that they get to see artists come in that are women and we've had women demonstrate artwork. So it's really important that we're reaching out to the community. And so supporting us is not just financial, which is an enormous amount of help for us right now, but also to support us through um, following our artists and making sure that we're in the schools and that we're getting the words out there. So in any way that people would like to support us, we're open to partnerships and a lot of different opportunities just to help because our goal is to help elevate visual voices of people who are not represented in major yeah. galleries or museums. 
Well, and really, too, if you believe in inspiring other people and giving other people a great opportunity to uh, to to for, especially with artwork, I mean, there was a lot of time and effort to goes into that. Uh, I do know artists. I know some uh, some incredible artists, but there's a ton of time and a lot of them, they do it by hobby or in that type of thing. But if they want to build a career out of it uh, and, and and start to to take it to the next level, I mean, it's. You know, what a better way if you were, uh, you know, somebody who's looking at, hey, I got a couple extra bucks. I want to support that. If I believe in that, I believe in inspiring other people. You know, the 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 arms and legs of this organization and what you're doing, Kimberly, is is so incredible. Now, I mean, a dollar goes a long way in your organization and it's a, it's directly related to, to your mission you know, to, to, to bring that work, uh, to, to areas that, and more importantly, it's not like just bringing the artwork in front of people and opening up the, uh, uh, the distribution channel for a lot of these great artists, but it's, it, what it's actually doing is it's bringing hope to people, right? It's bringing, it's inspiring them. It's, it's, there's a deeper, con- it's there's something deeper here that I believe your organization is doing by doing that is, is by it's opening up when you open up hope and, and think about it when it ends up happening, you inspire other artists like that. Well, now they, they're like, okay, the world's not so bad of a place. Right. And then, and then the, the, the effect that that has on other people, their friends, their family, look at this organization did look at, look where I'm at today. Um, now guess what? That does affect you know their family, their friends, and when that happens, what the more positivity, uh, it's a it's it is contagious, right? It's a good kind of it contagious. So that kind of positivity can spread throughout the world, and believe you know. But it starts with one person. It starts with you know one person being expi- inspired, and one person, or even a piece of art. We all know pieces of art that have changed the you know changed the lives and changed the world. So. You know that one piece can can uh, inspire other people to uh, create this contagious effect that ultimately gets everybody thinking in positivity and not oh the world's a bad place because of the, the well the media is telling us that so let's believe it no um, let's so if you believe in 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 bringing positivity to other people man like what a better way to uh, to get involved financially or uh, somehow get involved you know with your hands <laughs> right so. Jason, actually, I'm glad you mentioned how far a dollar will go because a dollar, when it's multiplied by so many people who really care about our society, it can grow great things. Um, Part of our vision for the future is that in our space, in our art gallery space, we're hoping to raise the funds to eventually get art studios that will have a daycare on the premise. Oh, and wow. the reason that's important is it's nowhere in the world. Nowhere in the world yeah. will you find an art studio for women to come work who have small children. And that has been a huge obstacle for many women to pursue art careers. And um, because they don't want to be away from their children, they have to care for their children. That's going to be one way that we're going to kind of step out and help to make the world better is to provide services like that for women that, is you know unique to women's situations, especially being artists. But also, we're also going to have an art therapist on the premise for women who have experienced trauma and who may be incredible artists and they are very creative, but they can be suffering from emotional uh, blocks that can be helped through art therapy. So donating, I don't know, a cup of I'm not going to name the company, but a coffee (laughs) that you would purchase donating one cup of coffee's price each week can make such a difference. And we can get women to have art therapy and that's going to make our whole society much better. Also, if we have women who can come in and relax for a couple of hours and create art, that affects the family I mean, when their children mm-hmm. are cared for nearby and they can be in art programs themselves. These things, a lot of people think, oh, women, you know, um, they kind of isolate it that we are just they, they pinhole us into a ideal of what being a woman is like or what what it should be like. Mm-hmm. And they don't understand all of the diversity and all of the different situations that women might be facing. So yeah. through 
art programs, art is in itself an incredible stress release and yeah. it's a great venue. And it's like you said, there's art that has made a huge difference and impact on our society. And it is one of the ways that a visual voice overrides the written voice or the spoken voice. It, it doesn't have a language barrier. So a mm -hmm. woman who creates art in Puerto Rico, her art can mean things all over the world in any yeah. language. And that can bring a lot of different emotions and feelings and connections like no other source, you know, like no other, yeah. you know, you will have books and you have to have them transcribed into another language. Art, you don't have to do that. And even in our technological advanced world, um, yeah. if computers did all go down, art would still remain. So yeah, it's just art is important and it's important to recognize the past, present and the future. So I like your um, statement about how far a dollar will go. It will go so much farther than you would ever expect because it can just impact the future of how people oh, yeah. will look at us and see us and see our history. And I like to call it her story as well. So, yeah. Well, and, and again, you're removing the barrier for people you're removing. Um, and, and that is a barrier. That is definitely mm -hmm. a barrier because um, <clears throat> with, you know, for, especially for women that uh, you have kids, you know, I know uh, we have a four and a half year old right now as we do this. And it is, it's hard just to get, get up and get a workout in sometimes, you know, for, especially for her. Um, so it's that, that could be really, really, really challenging. And I think the fact that you're, you're a, one is identifying those, those uh, issues or never or I say issues, but really they're, they're roadblocks, they're challenges mm -hmm. and barriers and, and you're, you're eliminating that and you're inspiring people at the same time. So you're not just inspiring people say, Hey, do this, do this, do this and, and get involved in everything else. But you're uh, recognizing some of those things that are keeping people from coming in and, and, and working on the art for a couple hours. Uh, and by eliminating that, you are actually enabling them to, to actually be, make that vision become a reality. So um, mm -hmm. I am super Super excited about your organization, where you're going. Um, is there any other thing uh, before we hop off here, Kimberly, that you wanted to share? Anything that we might not know from uh, going to your website, or is there anything that's sort of you know under the iceberg or under the uh, behind the curtain that you'd want to share before we hop off? Um, just how funding is needed to move forward with this, but um. All of our programs, they're all developing. Our membership program is really incredible because we're um, having that advance so that every artist can start putting together a portfolio within our membership and share it. Yeah. And we have a great membership community. We have um, great exhibits, especially since we're opening up our art gallery. We hope that everyone that even visits Jacksonville, Florida, Make sure to come downtown near um, the Cummers Art Museum. We're right down the street from the Cummers Art Museum. And our gallery is one of maybe, um, it used to be about 12 in the entire United States. And I believe we're up to about mm -hmm. 20 in the entire United States that is totally focused on women's artwork. So oh. I- That's interesting. Um, yeah, I would have not have known that. Right. Yeah, and, and <clears throat> yeah it's uh, one out of 20. States here, yeah. Yeah, and Europe, they also, they've been developing yeah. it, but we get a lot of inspiration from Guerrilla Girls, and they have been doing this work for a lot of years. There's a lot of other great women's organizations that have been doing this since the 60s. That's when it, we really, wow. we weren't just burning bras. We were actually. <laughs> yeah, right. We were actually starting movements, and um, so this yeah. is an important movement, and uh we're just continuing to carry that torch and hopefully, hopefully someday there won't be need to pass that torch on and we will have right. all art viewed for its intricate value of the artwork itself and the story and the storyteller and irregardless of what their gender or ethnicity or religion or anything else is. Hopefully that's our biggest goal is we hope not to 
be in existence in the future yeah. because everybody has a voice and exactly. everybody has equal opportunity. So that was it. Thank you so much, Jason. What a perfect, what a perfect way to, to, to wrap everything up. Kimberly, you've been an amazing guest today. You've been Thank so you. much fun. And, uh, you know, for everybody out there, listen, uh, make, make sure that you go to femartgallery.org. So femart, that's just fem, F-E-M, artgallery.org. Be sure to check them out. Be sure to get involved. Be sure to, uh, as, as Kimberly mentioned, for, you know, a cup of coffee a week can bring inspiration to those that uh, that that are you know they're they're trying to make something for themselves right they're trying to express uh, the expression of art it's not even just the the artists themselves but also the expression and getting that artwork out into the world is is something that can insp is, inspires people inspires uh people at, of, of wherever they're at whether they're in a hospital or whether they're in a preschool or whether they're in um, you know, in, in major art, art galleries, right. And going through and, and, and really Kimberly and her team with them, art gallery are, are providing the gateway to that world. And, uh, so if you believe in that and, uh, you, you know, for again, for a cup of coffee a, a week, you can make a huge difference in that. So, uh, another way you can make a huge difference is by taking this video and sharing it. So be sure to uh, click on the share button here. Um, what a better way is by you know sharing this out with uh, you know your art friends, or if you don't have art friends, just share it out with your friends or family uh, or anybody you know uh, to get the word out here. That's really important here is to build awareness and to bring more or yeah, bring more awareness to the great work of the people and organizations making a difference. Uh, be sure also to subscribe to the missions that made them here, and be sure to smack the bell if you're on YouTube here, so you can get notifications when we come out with new episodes. And with that said, have an amazing rest of the day and stay awesome. Thank you, Jason.